Howdy friends, Pete here. Last year my partner Amanda and I lived outside the USSA for about five months. We were attracted to the lower cost of living and the warmer weather in Mexico, plus we knew some folks there. I thought I'd share a bit about that, especially as it relates to our interactions with police, as I haven't found much related content online. We entered Mexico on foot, we crossed from El Paso into Juarez, and unlike the long lines, hardened buildings, and uh, intensive checkpoints, the folks heading the other way experienced. Uh, when we passed the arbitrary political boundary, it was pretty easy. We just strolled past two guys clad in camo, leaning against a wall and with rifles, and they barely even glanced at us. Uh, about 100 feet later, we hopped into a taxi, went to the airport, and after a flight, a bus trip, and a ferry, ended up in Cozumel, where we lived for over two months. Cozumel, or Cozumel, as it's pronounced by locals, is, has about 100,000 people. We saw police and military cruising the main drag and uh, in some neighborhoods at times doing some road pirate activity and just essentially having a presence, being visible. Um, we talked to some locals. Many uh, just, you know, they didn't have a, a great level of respect for the police employees, but at the same time they didn't like fear them or worry about them too much. Though we did meet some who uh, said that they had been harassed in the past, uh, that corruption and graft is common. And there was one person in particular who was taken to the police outfit's headquarters and physically beaten, um, though he you know, chose not to pursue any sort of ramifications, fearing uh, retribution at an even uh, more significant degree. Uh, we also found that at the uh, arrival point for the ferries, uh, the passengers' baggage would sometimes be searched by folks wearing camo or badges and with canines. And, um, you know, these are folks who haven't harmed anyone. They're not suspected of committing any illegal activity yet. They're just all blanket subjected to these searches as have become uh, all too common elsewhere in the world. Uh, that said, my, my partner and I, we were never uh, approached or harassed by folks with badges during our time in, in Cozumel and I think uh, one big reason for that is the complexion of our skin. After over two months in Cozumel we decided that it wasn't the place we wanted to set up shop long term. It was beautiful obviously there. We were able to swim and live pretty cheap but uh, we decided to move on and we, we uh, set our sights on Acapulco. We had been told before leaving for Mexico that there were a number of checkpoints in northern Mexico closer to the USSA political boundary which we were told by a number of people are funded from money out of DC and it was one reason we chose to fly from Juarez uh, out to the Yucatan rather than take uh, ground transportation so we were both surprised when we uh, went from Cozumel to Acapulco on the east side of Mexico to the west coast uh, it was about a 30 hour bus ride that we encountered a number of checkpoints uh, three or four checkpoints uh, in which the bus was stopped and boarded and one time that we were asked to produce identification. Acapulco definitely had a different vibe than Cozumel. Acapulco was a city of uh, over a million people, about ten times the size of Cozumel, and the topography was much different. Instead of being a flat island, it was uh, mountainous and had a, had a bay. And um, you may have seen some stories last year that were floating around online that claimed that Acapulco was police free, that there were no police in Acapulco. You know, before we went to Mexico, I tried to look into this and find out what exactly was going on with that, what, what the claims were, and, and found relatively little. So it wasn't until we were on the ground that we learned that what those articles were referencing, though again, they maybe purposefully failed to reference in detail, was that it was uh, concerning only the transit police, the, tra the traffic enforcement, who would uh, you know, issue ransom notes on people's vehicles. And um, certainly, even though for a time, maybe eight months or so, these traffic enforcement uh, employees weren't working, they were on strike trying to get uh, higher pay. Uh, you know, area residents weren't too concerned. They certain, like anywhere else, they certainly didn't want to get uh, ransom notes on their vehicle, but that didn't mean that there weren't other folks with badges uh, patrolling around. In fact, there was a multitude of such outfits. Um, the federal police who rolled around in blue vehicles, army personnel who rolled around in camo vehicles, 
municipal police who rolled around in white and blue vehicles, and Navy personnel who had gray vehicles. In Acapulco, we found that it was not uncommon to see military uh, personnel stationed on the main streets or uh, conducting checkpoints or just driving around in convoys, the same with uh, police employees, oftentimes rolling around with two or more vehicles and with mounted machine guns in the back. Just like in the USSA, it seemed like a premium was placed on visibility. Acapulco had, uh, I guess, been racked by uh, a lot of violence in five to ten years ago, and uh, it, the lasting effects have been less tourists, especially less tourists from outside of Mexico. And so, rather than dial back the causes for this violence, uh, namely being the prohibitions of goods and services, uh, the supposed answer was just to ratchet up these enforcers and their presence, but, you know, goods and services are still being bought and sold. Private security was also pretty prevalent in certain areas of town. This mirrored what I saw when I went to South Africa in late 2013 with the police accountability tour. Perhaps the most strikingly different experience I had uh, interacting with police employees in Mexico than those that I've had elsewhere was a road pirate stop or an attempted road pirate stop. Uh, some of us were in a van driven by a friend of mine and a man on a motorcycle stopped him and uh, was trying to communicate to him to tell him to pull up so he could be given a ticket or a ransom note. My friend said, I don't know what you're talking about and simply drove away. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hell yeah. Now in the USSA, if that were to happen, um, it's likely my friend and potentially us in the vehicle as well would have been killed, would have been shot, would have been, you know, had a pit stop executed, a pit maneuver executed on the vehicle, uh, flipping us around, who knows. Um, but to my knowledge, this person on the motorcycle didn't, didn't pursue at all and didn't even get on the radio to call his comrades to intercept us. So uh, my friend, you know, rightly, uh, disassociated himself from that situation. He acted in a peaceful way. He had not harmed anybody. He had not damaged any property. He didn't cause any victim. There was no reason this stranger on a motorcycle had any right to uh, demand from him a ransom. So my friend, you know, did, did a great thing. He just said, no thanks, and moved on. It was a wonderful thing. After about two and a half months in Acapulco, we decided to move on yet again. We spent about a week in Mexico City at a Bitcoin conference and while there, we saw a pretty heavy police presence, especially downtown. Um, but we eventually decided to return to the Shire, where my partner and I met and where we both have spent some time. Looking back, our time in Mexico only reinforced in my mind that things are the same everywhere, just relevant, just slightly at a different level. Most folks prefer to smile than to threaten. Most folks prefer peace to violence. Most folks just want to do their thing, to be left alone without interference, uh, to live and let live, essentially. There is no perfect place free from tyranny. Indeed, could there really be good without bad? But things are relative, and the more we can create a world where the norm is equal justice, rather than special justice for some, the better we'll all be. As much as you can, live not according to the complex, inconsistent, and illogical dictates from some strangers in faraway domed buildings, but according to your own conscience. In doing so, you have the ability to obtain something that's not attached to any geographical location, internal peace. One mind at a time, that is how we diminish the police state and create a world more conducive to human flourishing.